Welcome back. I'm Justin and this is the CNR Collector channel. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different. Uh, we're going to start a series up that uh, focuses on uh, items that I've found in the wild, uh, be it on the internet or uh, at stores or, or wherever I'm at. Um, I tend to find some unusual stuff and uh, a lot of times it's military related or firearms related stuff and I thought that it would work well in this channel because I'm sure that those of us that collect guns don't just collect guns, we do collect gear too. Today we've got this number 9 Mark I uh, bayonet. Now this was used um, for the number 4 Mark I, 2 or 3 and uh, also uh, could have been used on like the Sten Mark V or something like that. Um, but what's unusual about this one is it's completely covered in a really hard wax coating. You guys can see, probably see right there that there is a significant amount of this yellow colored wax on there. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go over this. We're going to actually open it, take it out of its case, out of its tomb today, and uh, Hopefully we'll find out what bayonet lies beneath. And the only stuff that I can make out underneath that wax is it looks like there was a uh, issue number 124 and there's an A on the bottom. Other than that, I can't see any other markings. Um, when we look for markings, uh, we're going to look on the left side, and a lot of times they're going to be right here where the barrel would be sticking out. So, all right, so the story is uh, in the 80s, these needed to be preserved. Now, prior to, they had just used a wax paper and covered them in a uh, grease or a wax and um, they decided to change it up and they used what was called PX15 wax and I mean this stuff I could break it off like I could break that edge off if I really wanted to but it is not it's not moving very easily there's no flex to it um, but yeah, they use this PX-15 wax to cover these bayonets with, but they found out that it was just too expensive to, uh, of a process to do. Of course, just slapping grease on them and stacking them away probably would be easier. But uh, normally these would be found inside a paper wrapper also. And I'll throw in a picture of that paper wrapper and the label that came on the outside. All right, now let's get down to it. And be very careful about cutting. I don't want to scratch the uh, metal. So I'm just going to cut and almost make like a scabbard of this wax. So it almost cracked when I when I pushed through there. That was kind of cool. You can hear, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it, it was cracking as I was pushing through. All right, we'll see if we got enough removed. Oh man. So this is going to have to be a plan B. I thought I could slide this off. All right, well, I'm going to try going along the edge here. See if we can uh, cut through the edge a little bit. Loosen it up.
It's a very interesting material. It's uh, it is quite sturdy stuff. There we go. Whew, man, I really don't want to ruin that. That is that is pretty interesting stuff. You see, it has a very yellow tint to it. Let's take a look at the blade. All right, so the blade has a little bit of oil on it. Very light. Uh, it's not sharpened. Let's get that Bowie knife tip. Now, interesting fact about the uh, Number nine is it's kind of a combination of the uh, number four and the number five. Number four was a spike bayonet on this type of mount. And a number five uh, is your traditional jungle carbine um, style bayonet that ended up with this Bowie knife style tip on it. But if we look it over, I do not see any clues to who may have manufactured this. There are several manufacturers to these, and uh, each one was slightly different, but um, I don't see any clues on the blade so far. So we're going to remove the wax off the mount. Um, what I'm hoping to do is kind of do how we did with this and I'll just split it I think I'll split it up the bottom and see if I can push it off the top so we'll start down by this A that we saw earlier I'm just going to go right down the middle and as soon as you get air in there it just starts cracking and changing colors As you can see, this had been punctured already. There is a bunch of gunk stuck in it right now. I'm curious to see how much wax is actually in in that area. But we've already cut through there, so let's continue cutting down. So that popped. Let's see if we get this other side to pop off. Ooh, I think it's stuck inside there. Yeah, don't know if it's going to want to come off that. But right now we have that, that litter A exposed. And it does look like there's a bunch of packing grease or there's more of this stuff inside. But we've got a broad arrow mark on the back. Along with it looks like possibly the ED. So let's keep trying. It's, lift, it's lifting off. Yeah. All right. Well, that almost perfectly preserved. It popped right off there. 
So here's a closer look of the bayonet. Looks like it's parkerized and then has black paint painted over the back. Now if we look at some markings, let's see. We've got the J arrow two, should be some type of inspection mark. That's either I-24 or 124. I'm not really sure. I do not know what that stands for. There's a couple inspector stamps on the front. So a P-20 and a P-38. We got the manufacturer's mark. It's difficult to see, but there's a P with the O inside a circle. So a P inside a circle, and then uh, 1949. You can kind of see the one and the nine, and the rest is kind of lost. Oh, there we go. See the four right there. Oh, I get Cosmo on me. All right. Uh, on the bottom, we've got an A. On the bottom of the uh, plunger part there. Got the uh, ED mark and the broad arrow. So here's the wax shell. We were able to get it off in uh, two parts. So I just cut it down that way and pull it out. And then the blade. Uh, we have to cut down, pull that out, because it was stuck in there pretty good. Hey, if you guys like this type of content, just uh, let me know, know down below and uh, leave me a comment. Um, if you know more about this bayonet, leave me some more information. If you have questions about it, uh, just go ahead and ask them to me. I'll try to answer them best I can. Um, I'm a bayonet collector on top of also being a uh, firearms collector, so don't be too surprised if you see some more bayonets popping up on the channel. Um, but I thank you guys for sticking it out to the end, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.